Jared Poland, froknowsphoto.com, and this is your... Oh. Get down! Get down! Photo News Fix. Go Eagles. This fix is brought to you by Storyblocks, which has been an invaluable asset for us for well over 10 years. 10 years. If you've ever wondered where we found Madeline Kay's photo, Storyblocks. I mean, I mean, she's a real PR person. We didn't find her on Storyblocks. Storyblocks gives you unlimited access to royalty-free photos, videos, music, sound effects, vectors, motion backgrounds, and so much more. On top of that, they recently launched a Storyblocks plugin for Adobe Premiere that allows you to search all of Storyblocks right from Premiere, which is such a time saver. We pretty much use something from Storyblocks in every single video that we make. In fact, here's some hot air balloon footage that we pulled off of Storyblocks. To sign up today or to learn more, head on over to storyblocks.com slash fro. First up, we have a busy week of actual new products and not just rumors for once. Let's get off the jails, mom! With the Sigma 50 1.4 DGDN for Sony E-mount and no other mounts. Really? Really? Fine, fine, fine. It's also in L mount. F fine. L mount alliance. So are you happy now? Now I just got to take this lens out into the real world and shoot some college basketball. But Jared, it's a 1.4, it's not meant for basketball. Stop telling me what a lens is meant for. It's a lens. If the lens can keep up with a guy driving a hole, don't you think it will focus fine for your boring ass portraits? I'm fighting words. Now I will go into detail on whether it was able to keep up at the basketball game in just a second, but first, let's look at the specs for the lens. This lens weighs in at 1.48 pounds or 670 grams. It has a 11 rounded aperture blades, 72 millimeter filter thread, is only 4.3 inches in length, which I guess shorter in this situation is better, has an aperture lock as well as click and declick option, and is their first Sigma lens to use a high response linear actuator. So how does it focus on the A1 for basketball? It tracked very well, better than I expected. And yes, you can shoot sports at 1.4. If you want your images to stand out from others, reach for those primes. You'll have to wait for our full review. Okay. Because I haven't shot the portraits yet. So how much is it? $849, which is over $1,000 less than Sony's 50 1.2. If you're curious how the Sigma 50 1.4 compares to the old 1.4 for Sony, it's not even close. The old Sigma 50 1.4 was more miss than hit. Now I think Sigma has a winner on their hands with this one, but there are rumors of a Sony 1.4 coming soon as well. Before I get into the next story, are you a bowler and you wanna be on Team Fro or you just like how this shirt looks? Head on over to bit.ly slash fro bowling to order yours today. It's, it's kind of cool. It's, it's really cool. Next up, Nikon has officially released their long awaited 85 1.2Z. And yes, I got to shoot some portraits with a pre production model back in December. And by pre production model, I mean the lens, not Sydney, our actual model. Anyway, Nikon joins the ranks of Canon with a full frame mirrorless 85 1.2, which leaves Sony out of the loop. You're a slacker. Now here's the specs of Nikon's 85 1.2. It clocks in at a weight of 2.55 pounds or 1160 grams, which is slightly less than Canon's, which is 2.63 pounds or 1195 grams. There's 11 aperture blades versus Canon's nine, has an 82 millimeter filter thread, STM motors, and wins in the length department at one inch longer than Canon's 85 1.2. Oh yeah, and it doesn't have one of those stupid OLED displays, which is a waste of space and money. Like like I said earlier, I got to take this lens out for a spin in the real world on the Nikon Z9 and absolutely loved the results. There's nothing quite like an 85 1.2 for portraits. It's sharp, colorful, easy to handle, and a joy to shoot with. There's not much I can say bad about this lens. I mean, look at these photos of Sydney. They freaking pop. Now, speaking of popping, your head might explode. You see that scene in scanners. But this lens comes in at $2,800. The good news is that's the same regular price as Canon's, but at the time of recording this, the Canon is on sale for 2,500 bucks. The moral of the story, if you're a Nikon pro, who makes money that is, or just an old Nikon person with money to burn, this is a no questions asked must buy 
period, end of story. For real, that's the end of the story. And finally, Canon has dropped a bomb. It's broken. On Sony and Nikon with two new entry level cameras that feel far from entry level in terms of quality and features. Introducing the crop sensor R50 and the full frame R8. Now I got to spend three days with both of these cameras in Charleston, South Carolina, where Canon brought a bunch of press and YouTubers out to play with these cameras. Now, if you haven't checked out my full hands on preview of both of those just yet, click the link down below, but wait till after the fix. But now I'm gonna give you the cliff notes starting with the R8. The R8 is a full frame camera packing the same 24.2 megapixel sensor as the R6 Mark II, but in a body very similar to the RP. Since it has the same sensor as the R6 Mark II, it also has the same dual pixel AF and Digic X processor as well, because X gonna give it to you. X once gave it to you, X gives it to you no more. For my home. It can shoot at six frames per second with the first curtain shutter and 20 frames per second in H mode and 40 frames per second in H plus. The body is small, weighing in at one pound or 461 grams. It has a tiny but usable EVF, three inch flip out screen and an ISO range of 100 to 102,400. Again, the same exact range as the R6 Mark II. The video specs are the same exact as as well, so I'm not gonna go over those right here. The only things that are different is that the R8 uses the much smaller LPE17 battery, doesn't have IBIS, has only one SD card slot, and costs 1500 bucks. Oh, I'll take two. The R8, hands down, is the best entry-level mirrorless camera on the market for the money as well as what it offers you. Now onto the R50. The R50 pretty much replaces the extremely popular M50 Mark II. The R50 has a 24.2 megapixel APS-C cropped sensor with dual pixel AF and a Digic X processor, which is the same as Canon's R10. You've got a tiny 2.36 million dot EVF, three inch flip out touchscreen, digital hot shoe, smaller LPE17 battery, one SD card slot, shoots 12 frames per second with the first curtain electronic shutter and 15 with full electronic shutter. In terms of video, you have full width 4K up to 30 frames per second oversampled from 6K as well as 4K 120. The video quality is leaps and bounds better than the M50 Mark II. Now it doesn't feel the best in the hands, but neither did its predecessor. The good news is, this is a solid camera for creators looking to step up from a cell phone and create much higher quality photos and videos. The body is only $679 with the kit including an 18 to 45 lens coming in at $799. Hey, put me down too, man, I get one. All RF glass will work on this body. Now at the end of the day, the R8 and R50 give Canon one of the best mirrorless lineups in the game, if not the best, because I really think that they have the best lineup from start to finish. And there you have it. That's your photo news fix this time around. To check out the last fix, go ahead and click on the screen right here. Don't forget to like, share, comment, and subscribe. And that's where I'm gonna leave it. Jared Polinfronosphoto.com. See ya.